Elon Levy, the spokesperson for Israel, who resigned after a clash with David Cameron, uh, he, he, he was born, uh, Levy was born in North London and then emigrated to Israel, where he became the spokesperson for the Netanyahu government. And the clash was over whether Israel is allowing aid into Gaza, and specifically on a Saturday, and Levy claims that the UN was instrumental in stopping the aid going through on a Saturday, whereas in fact there's no evidence for that at all. The, the wider problem is whether or not the failure of aid, uh, so much aid which has been sent by Britain, has not got through in a timely manner has been stopped at the borders, has been checked, or simply has been refused. And the question really is whether the suppression of aid by Israel is uh, helping the case that can be made for a genocide, and indeed is helping to create the environment of a genocide, where Israel is stopping ordinary citizens from getting food, water, equipment, and simply sending it by air isn't enough. It's dangerous. People are dying because they're going into the sea to collect the packages, and they're drowning. Uh, and some of them, uh, some of these things are being dropped out of the sky and falling on people's heads. It's, it, it's not an accurate way to deliver aid. Of course, taking in truckloads of aid is now dangerous because of the unexploded weapons buried uh, all around Gaza. But to what extent do other people outside of Israel share responsibility for the failure of this aid getting through? To what extent does Elon Levy share responsibility because the genocide agreement in 19 going back to 1948 is about complicity incitement as well as starting a genocide and we have to be very careful that we are not complicit in any form of genocide i i personally don't think that the red line has absolutely been crossed in the same way as I think it's very difficult to say that the red line was crossed in in the case of the allegations of genocide made against Turkey, uh, the, the, the genocide of Armenians. Dreadful events in Armenia, uh, dreadful events in Turkey at the end of the First World War, dreadful events in Gaza, but a genocide requires a determination to destroy the race and I think the uh, the Netanyahu situation though dreadful though bordering on genocide may not quite be such however the destruction of agriculture and the failure to let in aid the suppression of aid may well find Netanyahu and those people who have worked with him may they may well find that Netanyahu falls foul of the international definitions of complicity or incitement to genocide. So a very serious charge. And the International Court of Justice has ordered Israel to facilitate aid in order to prevent genocide, and Israel has failed to comply. And Elon Levy has lied. And this has been very clear in the exchange of letters between David Cameron and the House of Commons committees. It's confirmed by Cameron. And that takes it out of the realm of an allegation 
into the realm of a clear statement of fact made under parliamentary privilege and it is an astonishing diplomatic turnaround but the next issue is to what extent other countries are complicit in the incitement to and the failure to prevent the genocide in Gaza. Because a failure to get water to civilians, if it is Israel's, um, in Israel's power to provide that water, to access that water, to fail to give access to water, to bombard and destroy the only hospitals that are functioning in Gaza, to Karol people, citizens in a small area. This is inhumanity, and it really has to stop. We, we, we have to bring this siege to to it to an end and and we have to acknowledge that Netanyahu was wrong from the beginning there isn't a point at which there are too many deaths the plan is either right or the plan is wrong in this case I think the plan was wrong from the beginning was it right for Israel to defend itself absolutely was this the way to defend itself absolutely not and that's the issue. The way for Israel to defend itself was either to uh, to 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 find to find a way to uh, engage with the Hamas terrorists and release the hostages directly, or to gather together an international coalition to enter Gaza. And I think specifically that international coalition was certainly on the cusp. It was certainly something that could have been done in the days immediately following the shocking attack, the shocking terrorist attack on the 7th of October. And led by Arab nations, that would have been a very powerful signal that Hamas had crossed a red line. Instead, I think it's Israel under Netanyahu that has crossed a red line. And I think those countries who have enabled and supported Israel in that process, we need to be extremely careful that we are not defying the International Court of Justice in its command to prevent a genocide by facilitating aid. I think we need to go much further than that. I think we need to facilitate peace and we need to free the hostages and right at the beginning of the campaign the families of the hostages and those people who were many of them were out on the streets yesterday saying release all the Palestinian prisoners give them back for all the hostages not a select few all of them and if that was the price, that was the price. Destroying Palestine, becoming the bogeyman, the pariah of the Middle East. That's not, that's not a price anyone should have paid. And it's not, um, it, 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 it was not wisdom on the part of the Netanyahu government.